So I've been all over the internet and I've seen all kinds of Switch stuff. There's Switch articles and Switch videos and Switch blog posts and whatever you want to call them. Ranging from positive to negative. Uh, I've personally seen a lot more negative than positive, but it might just be uh, related to what I do for work and how I go about things. Maybe it's not as bad as I think it is. But there's one article in particular that a few people linked me into today and it absolutely blows my mind because it starts off one way and it makes you think it's going one way and then the rest of it to me makes a ton of sense this is this is such a mind-boggling article that I had to show it to you so there's this article over at Gizmodo and its title is what you need to know about Nintendo Switch's garbage graphics right off the bat you're like oh that title I mean it is quintessential clickbait the Nintendo fans see that and they're like oh why do you have to say that and you're gonna click on it to see what they say and then the people that don't follow Nintendo are like yeah I suspected that was gonna be the case with the switch bad graphics so you get everybody I don't even know if I can be mad at that title I mean I don't like clickbait but that title's so perfectly written to get every everybody in on it that it, it, it's hard for me to be mad I mean I wish it wasn't there but it got me to click it so so I read the title and I was like, well, I bet I know how this article is going to play out. But with every article, I don't just read the title. I make sure to read the actual article before I get annoyed with something. And that's when, uh, little by little, my mind started to be blown. Uh, the article did not head in the direction at all that I thought it was going to. And it pretty much starts off right in the first paragraph. Uh, I'll read the first paragraph to you. The Switch looks like it might be complete weak sauce when compared to the best consoles from Sony and Microsoft. But the real question is, does that even matter? Probably not. Uh, the first sentence you're like, oh, here we go. The second sentence you're like, uh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I kind of agree with that. <laughs> so then uh, it, I'm telling you, it gets better and better from here on out. So the article goes on to talk about how Sony and Microsoft focus on 4K and HDR on their systems. And Nintendo's not doing that with the Switch. And then the quote, it says, Nintendo ignoring that soup seems positively stupid at first glance, but that's because we're accustomed to a console war of specs, and Nintendo doesn't want any part of it. Yes, that's very true. If you're a Nintendo fan and you've been following them for, for a while now, you know that Nintendo hasn't been interested in the spec race uh, for quite some time, I would say, since the GameCube days. Ever since then, they've focused even more on doing their own thing. Nintendo has always done their own thing. But then they were thinking about how else they could approach the game industry and maybe just going down the road of consoles that are extremely powerful when it comes to visuals isn't the only way to do things. And that's what they've been doing for years and years now. The article goes on to discuss how Nintendo moved away from the GameCube power race into the Wii where they weren't worried about those specs and focused on other areas of gaming. Uh, and it says, the consoles from Sony and Microsoft were for hardcore gamers looking for 1080p resolution, HDMI out, and hyper-realistic graphics. The Wii was for people who didn't know what any of those buzzwords meant. That is very true. I'd also add in there that those buzzwords uh, weren't buzzwords to some gamers, but uh, some of those gamers, like myself, just didn't care about that. Uh, I'm not playing games for resolutions, so it didn't bother me, but... Uh, it's very true that the Wii reached out to people who didn't even know about 1080p or care about HDMI or anything like that. It hit people that never even bought game systems before, so this was their first console, so any of that discussion wasn't anywhere near what they were thinking. And that brings us to the Switch discussion in the article, where the writer says, We're seeing Nintendo use the same strategy with the new Nintendo Switch. The console is for the masses, not the spec-obsessed gamer, blah, 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 blah. It's a perfectly adequate resolution in a lot of respects. Most of the TVs in my home and in homes across the U.S. have televisions with a max resolution of 1080p. Unless you're updating your set this year, 1080p is all you need. Uh, and again, if Nintendo is reaching out to a wider audience and they are not focused on the spec race, then the 1080p thing makes sense. Uh, I mean, I am an avid gamer and I have two TVs that have ten that support 1080p, but they don't do 4K. Uh, so, I mean, like I said, that that resolution stuff doesn't matter to me. I'd play it if it was worse resolution or better resolution. I'm just in it for the games. But to talk about the, what's in most homes right now. It's 1080p supported TVs and not 4K supported TVs. So that, that makes sense to me. 
The resolution talk goes on a bit more and says, this all means that 900p at 30 frames per second, that's a perfectly popular set of specs. It's positively common and imminently playable, and it's perfectly in line with Nintendo's decade-long strategy of ignoring the latest and greatest TV fads to focus on its own fads. Again, I completely agree with that. Nintendo hasn't ever been interested in resolution stuff like that. They've been interested in innovating with controls or trying something new in those areas. Uh... That's what their thing is. They like to make new ways to play games and experience games, not new ways to enhance the resolutions of games. And I'm not saying that's bad uh, for people that want better resolution. I'm just saying if you've been following Nintendo, the fact that they're not pushing horsepower and are not uh, gunning after the highest resolution shouldn't be a surprise. It's been like this for well over 10 years now. Right at the end of the article, there's a little bit of discussion around how Nintendo could potentially upgrade the Switch to, to do higher resolutions and stuff like that. But the last point is, even if Nintendo opts to ignore 4K altogether, it could be fine. The Wii managed to be a wildly successful console because it let grandma's bowl and granddad's lose weight, and that random non-gamer friend of yours have a lightsaber duel. If the $300 Switch can get people as excited about virtual cow milking, then all the resolutions and frame rates and processors won't matter. Uh, 100% agree. If Nintendo really is reaching out for that wide market with the Switch and they have things that they have lined up to bring in those lapsed Wii gamers, if that's their goal, then that's 100% correct. The, the frame rates and the resolutions and all that will have no impact on those people. They're going to see a game that they want to play, they're going to see a game they want to enjoy with friends or family, and that's what's going to sell them on the system. Alex Kranz is the writer of this article over at Gizmodo, and I have to say, well done, Alex. <laughs> you did uh, you did an excellent job because uh, I read the title and I thought one thing. It got me to click your article. I read what you said, and I was like, oh my god, they they think like I think, and it seems like they they know a bit of Nintendo history as well. Uh, there's a couple like little nitpicky elements in the article that, that I could call out, but nothing that I feel that hurts the overall message. It seems like Alex knows the, the way Nintendo operates. They like doing their own thing. They don't really chase specs anymore. They haven't done that since the GameCube era, and they're reaching out to all different types of gamers. Uh, sure, would they like to get that hardcore crowd? Uh, they certainly would, and they're going to get some of it, but they're not going to get the ones that gun for resolution or the best graphics. And so be it. Nintendo knows there's other markets out there that they can get their system in front of, like uh, the lapsed Wii gamers, like I said, or younger kids who don't know about any of that stuff, or the adults who just want to play fun games, or the people who are interested in Nintendo's brands, and there's so many other markets out there. Will Nintendo get them with the Switch? I don't know. But uh, you can be certain that Nintendo wants to reach those markets, so... They're going to see what they can do, and this is the system they've put out there in front of those people, the Switch, and we'll see if it catches on, and uh, I, I'm i along for the ride, and <laughs> Alex, you certainly took me for a ride on this article, but uh, like I said, I can't be mad at you for it. Hey guys, RMC here from Go Nintendo. If you like what you saw in the video, why don't you give us a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe? We'd love to have you. If you want to see what else we're up to, you can check out GoNintendo.com for 24-hour Nintendo news. You can visit us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash GoNintendo. You can check us out on Twitter at Twitter.com slash GoNintendoTweet. And we're even over on Instagram at Instagram.com slash GoNintendo. I put all the links in the description just to make it easier for you guys to follow. Thanks a lot!